Welcome again everyone, this is Shod Redux with another video commentary for Battlefield Play for Free. If you haven't played it yet, go check it out at battlefield.playforfree.com. This video was a special request by U238, which is a uh, EA staff member for the Battlefield Heroes and Battlefield Play for Free uh, um, games. So. Uh, this particular video, just to give you an idea, if you haven't already noticed what I've got in my hands, it's actually the defibrillators I'll be using. So I apologize for the time frame that it took for me to make this video, but I was having some uh, training point issues because of the, the issue I guess that's going around in the, the beta right now, but I have no doubts that EA will fix it um, relatively soon. Just uh, be patient, guys. The defibrillator's main use in this game is to revive fallen teammates, however, you can use this as a deadly weapon as well to destroy your enemies. Especially if you come up behind them, because it's very discreet enough to where people will not notice that you're going through and killing them because they'll think you're reviving a teammate. So the defibrillator does one-up the knife by being able to revive your teammates, so if you're a medic class, Preferably want to pull out your defibrillator and shock paddle somebody versus using the knife. And also from what I've noticed is that using the shock paddles works a lot faster than actually going through and trying to knife somebody too. Now a good tip if you are a medic class um, and you just want to run around and use the shock paddles and do a bunch of close quarters uh, you know, knifing and defibrillating, you can use both of them in junction with each other. Um, for instance, say if you shock paddle somebody, instead of waiting for the shock paddle to recharge again so you can shock them, you can actually just um, press the uh, knife button and that way you don't have to wait because it's two separate animations, so to speak. And it kind of gives you the one up on somebody too in case you miss your shock paddles or your knife stab. You can just, you know, have a second chance. What I've noticed with the shock paddles is they're a little less buggy when doing melee attacks compared to the knife. However, it is extremely hard to get headshots with the shock paddles in comparison with just using the knife. Now the current training points that would matter in going through and doing something like this very effectively would actually be adding it to your sprint ability as well as maybe your regular jog ability so that way you can move faster around the battlefield. Um, and also just having just the level 1 unlock for the defibrillators because that's what I'm currently using in the video right now. Um, except for the jog. I didn't unlock that training point because of, you know, the training point issue that I was having. Uh, one of the things I would like to point out again, I know I've pointed it out in one of my other videos, I believe, is that um, a lot of the times you'll see me go through and, you know, run around and start looking behind me um, just to get like a, a, you know, a view of what's going on behind me when I hit the, uh, the default button is actually the F key to view behind you. So um, just keep that in mind, that's one of the things I normally um, do so that way I can watch my back when I'm running across like alleyways or areas or anything like that when I'm doing, you know, something like this. Also in this video, um, you'll see me throw around the med pack here and there just to get my health back up so that way I can charge back out and do what I gotta do. Um, which is also part of the reason why I um, went through and got the, the KD ratio in this video that I did. Uh, this part coming up here, you're going to see a prime example of how buggy the shock paddles can really be. Because um, there was this guy that I just seen that went behind this tree here. And I shocked him the first time, missed him, and shocked nothing, and still got the kill for it. So that's a good example of it being very buggy right there. This next part coming up made me laugh a little bit because this is what was going through my head. So I hope that explained the humor of the situation a little bit. Uh, I was still laughing then, and I really wasn't paying attention because of, you know, what I was thinking about. This situation coming up was a little tough because it decided to spawn me back in front of this guy again, and he immediately killed a teammate. And this teammate had to have hated me at first until he realized what I was possibly trying to do. Um, I was actually kind of using him a bit as a distraction. So that way I could go through and he could take him out since I can only use my defibrillators, which it looks like he did, which is really awesome. So um, that actually worked out as planned. And, and the other cool thing about that is that um, he may have gotten annoyed, but the thing is it doesn't count on his, uh, on his death, um, his deaths in the game. 
Uh, whenever you revive somebody um, that's, that was killed by an enemy, um, it does not count as a death. Um, it does still count as a kill for the enemy, but it doesn't go against your KD ratio if you're revived. The other th uh, good thing about having these shock panels is, um, you know, besides getting a kill and getting an additional 50 points for your kill, you also get 50 points for reviving your teammates as well. Even though this video is just showing more strictly offensive ways to use the defibrillator, um, if you're going to use it for, um, you know, effective team use, you definitely want to stick with a squad of teammates so that way, um, you know, if they're caught in a, uh, a bit of a um, heavy situation, you can continue to revive them so that way they can uh, go through and push and do what they have to do. Now, um, just pointing out, here's a really prime example of how I use that um, that backwards cam there. So that way I can totally uh, get the jump on somebody else. And, um, you know, also those walls and crevices between the uh, garages are really good places to hide in between the cities as well and, uh, and do that. Also, running around in this game does get you to places fast, but it causes you to be a relatively um, noticeable target. That's why a lot of times you'll see me, um, you know, in, in most of my videos just go and crouch around and move because um, it's less noticeable to the eyes. One of the things about this map being on the US side, you're able to go into the uh, construction site area, which I'm looking at currently right now in that general direction. Um, you're able to stay back there and you can snipe and do different things back there um, without the uh, the opposite team being able to come in there because if the opposite team tries to go inside that area it gives them a countdown meter and then they'll die for leaving the battle so to, so to speak. Um, personally, I'm not uh, enjoying that idea just for the simple fact that um, that area should just be, you know, open rain for everybody because it kind of makes it ridiculous that people can just camp back there and do that. Alright everyone, that's all I have for this video. Um, if you're enjoying these, um, you know, subscribe. I'll continue to make more and um, just leave comments about what you would like to see the next video be about. Um, you know, rate, subscribe, tell me what you like, tell me what you don't like, suggestions and the sort like that. So thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time.